Hello. How are you folks doing today? Pretty good? Awesome. It seems kind of cold out there all of a sudden. So I just was that guy on the bike on the sidewalk getting up here from the place that I was just at. So that's like one out of every 30 times that I bicycle someplace. So I'm using like my free karma pass and hopefully nobody trips me when I get out of here next time. So yeah, and I know. And, and they did all that work trying to make Broadway easier for people to ride bicycles onto. I don't feel like it actually succeeded so much as it made it easier for people opening car doors to kill you in traffic, right? Yeah. Alrighty, this is, the, this is one of the funnest lectures I get to do because I get to talk to you about all of the cool stuff you can now do with hardware now that you understand what it is and where it comes from. Um, now that you know how a computer works and what is on the inside of a computer, there are so many different ways that you can go with this technology, with the stuff that you can learn. And so I wanna talk to you today about some of the awesome stuff that you can do with hardware and hopefully encourage you by the end of today's class to get signed up to work on some of these things, to become an intern, to volunteer, to support, to start working on them because there is nothing like working on a project that is super fun and cool on the internet to build your community, to get you networking, to get your experience leveled up, to get you to the point where people want to hire you for things. And I know some of you are here to do this just as the prerequisite, but some of you are headed already off into hardware and technology as a career. So this is the place to get started now. You're, you're in community college. I did community college too. And the thing about this is, is that community colleges are not an immersive environment where you're expected to retreat from the world for four years and go and, you know, be in a fraternity or whatever. Instead, what you're supposed to do is start getting work experience immediately. It actually gives you a leg up on a lot of people in technology to start work now. So you start becoming part of these communities and the opportunities and experience will just expand in front of you. You will be blown away. So here's one of the first unbelievably cool things you can do. How many of you in here have ever heard of a Maker Faire before? Maker Faire, okay, so one or two of you. Please start Googling now. This is again where we, we start looking at stuff. Everybody please, and I wanna hear lots of typewriters clacking here, look up Maker Faire. Faire has an E on the end of it for some unknown reason because I feel like that's like a Renaissance fair thing where you put the E on the end of it and yeah, and this is supposed to be technology. All right, whatever. So Maker Faire is where you get to go to to make cool things. People make all kinds of stuff at these, weird uh, ceramics and hardware and musical instruments and all kinds of just amazing stuff. Think of it like Burning Man, but probably a lot less smelly and fewer bugs, maybe. And stuff doesn't so much get burned as probably exploded by the end of it. Um, you can see people who build things like trebuchets and um, just the most extraordinary things. Your mind will be completely blown. They do what's called a mini maker fair in lots of different cities. The mini maker fair for Seattle has just now ended, but just like, I guess, again, and I hesitate to use this as a metaphor with Burning Man, there is a maker community locally that you can go and join. You can join one of the, the um, shops. If you were in Las Vegas, for instance, you'd go to my friend Crux's place called Sin Shop, all right? But there's places around town that are maker communities and maker shops that you definitely want to be part of. They always offer student discounts and accessibility for people who want to volunteer to be part of them. Do please check out your Maker Fair, and if you think that this looks like the coolest place to be ever, just show up there sometime and ask to be let in and get a tour and see what you can do in terms of getting a discount. I will help you if you want. The next thing you can do, I would love for you to be part of something where you're actually manufacturing something. Um, how many of you have heard of Kickstarter, Indiegogo, stuff like that, crowdfunding campaigns? Okay, so most of you have heard of things like that. Um, crowdfunding campaigns and, and those kinds of, of ways of raising awareness about a product are often really great ways to market your own product. So I'm not just going to point you at a really cool product that I know about that is actually in the middle right now of a crowdfunding campaign, but also to really encourage you to create something on your own and run a small crowdfunding campaign. I will absolutely help you do this if you want to. Everybody please go Google the word Glowforge, G-L-O-W-F-O-R-G-E. How many of you have heard of Glowforge? Not a person. It is a laser cutter, a desktop laser cutter that my friend Dan has created, and it's awesome. It is super cool. You could do the most amazing stuff with it. Now that you're looking at Glowforge there, you can probably see on their page that they're in the middle of a crowdfunding campaign. Dan is really good at crowdfunding, which is why this is so successful. Um, he's actually somebody who's helped me before with crowdfunding, and he's a really great guy. 
Um, so I'm seeing some of the really nifty stuff that you can make with a desktop laser cutter on the screens around me right now. I am absolutely, my, my poor MacBook right now is, is be stickered, but it is not engraved. And they did an engraved top of a MacBook Air that is beautiful. This is just some of the, the niftiest stuff that you can do with a laser. And so who doesn't want to work with lasers and space robots, right? So yeah, take a look at this stuff. And if you would like to, I think actually Glowforge has an open house coming up. If you want to see this stuff in real life, tell me and I will actually point you towards the RSVP form and hopefully there's enough space left over still. But I think tomorrow night or tomorrow night, day after tomorrow night, they actually have an open house coming up and they're here in Seattle. So go look at all this stuff. Make something while you're there. It's really awesome, okay? <clears throat> Maybe volunteer to sweep the floor or something like that. Okay. Now I would like you to go and look at Kickstarter and take a look at the project called LightSail. LightSail uh, is the planetary exploration crowdfunding campaign that was just run by, how many of you have heard of Bill Nye the Science Guy? Raise the hand. How many of you have not heard of him? Oh, what a deep pleasure I get to introduce a couple of you to Bill Nye, who's the coolest person ever. Love the bow tie. Okay. So Bill Nye is the guy who just ran this, this crowdfunding campaign to create solar sail powered spacecraft. Okay, just stop and say that again. Solar powered, solar sail powered spacecraft. How freaking cool is that? Okay, so how many of you have seen Star Trek Deep Space Nine? Awesome. Do you remember the one where Captain Sisko and Jake Sisko got into the, um, they, they did this reproduction of the old Bajoran spacecraft where they were, there were solar sails and then the Cardassians said, no, it wasn't possible that the Bajorans had gotten to Cardassia that long ago um, using just this really old technology, but it was actually solar sails, right? You, okay, so I've got a couple of nodding heads. Good. New favorite student. Okay. So, and, and it worked. This Oh my God, is Star Trek come to life? <laughs> this actually, this is the thing that's happening right now. I back this. So, and I only did it really because I wanted to see all the updates, but my name is going to space on a solar sail. <laughs> Super cool. Okay, so this is, this is awesome stuff that you get to be part of. And I think you can still sign up now for stuff like updates on this. If you want to be part of this for like a dollar, you can get updates and stickers and things like that. And I'm just going to wear my, my mission patch on my arm, maybe forever, because my name is going to space. All right. So this is great stuff that you can see. And as you can see, as I keep bringing up with crowdfunding campaigns, a lot of this stuff is often very community oriented. All right. If you've got a skill set and you think you would love to be part of something like this, please let me know or throw it out there on the internet. Someone's going to want you to help with something, and it's a great way to great to get experience and community. Okay. And oh, does anybody have any questions so far with what I'm talking about? Anybody? Yes. Um, <laughs> solar sales. Um, solar sales. Yes. What? What are they trying to accomplish with that besides the fact that it's a momentum, a way to move around in space. Extremely low powered space flight. No longer a need for combustible fuel for space missions. Decreases danger, increases reliability, decreases the number of moving parts. How many of you have seen um, Armageddon? Right? Do you remember, I think it was like Steve Buscemi who was sitting there going, has anyone realized that we are sitting inside a bomb made out of 275,000 moving parts built by the lowest bidder? Right? <laughs> We're trying to get rid of that uh, possibility in the future. So um, it, it drastically decreases risk. I don't know what the speed level of this is. I'm sure that it's probably much less than that of a, um, of a combustible fuel source. But you can also improve this, this technology over time. And also it's much, much cheaper and much more accessible to everybody in the world to be part of than something that, it, that costs hundreds of millions, billions of dollars and is only able to be built by Elon Musk when he's in a good mood and has had his coffee that day. All right? Cool. So that's the reason why. Any other questions? What's that? And the rocket doesn't blow up on his birthday. Isn't today like his birthday or something like that? Oh, uh, oh, and then one of his rockets blew up or something. Oh, bless his heart. Oh, okay. Destiny. <laughs> wait, wait. Destiny from Stargate Universe what? Destiny. And see, I should have watched Stargate Universe. I kind of fell off around Stargate Atlantis. I mean, there was Jason Momoa and, you know, every nerd girl. Okay, so anything else about light sails or lasers or making trebuchets locally and not being arrested by the police? 
Okay. And then the last part, let's take a look at every nerd's favorite organization ever, NASA. What you're going to do is look for CubeSat, C-U-B-E-S-A-T, CubeSat. Take a look at the CubeSat launch initiative. This is super low cost, low orbiting Earth satellites that are accessible for people to launch on their own or that you can be part of launching. All right, these are able to open research opportunities for lots of different people. Basically, if you've ever wanted to be Fox Mulder and or one of the lone gunmen, which some of us may possibly have wanted to do that and thought that there should be gun ladies as well as gunmen, um, you have the opportunity now to um, write a program and find out whether or not something happens in space or not based on the research opportunities available with CubeSat. So the CubeSat, I think, is, what is it? Um, Oh yes, you can do things like put payloads in CubeSats, like does a fruit fly breed in space? I'm sure they've done that one already. Um, do, I don't know, does something weigh the same as something else in space? So I actually don't know what kind of payloads you can put into a CubeSat. Who's got an idea for a payload you could drop into a CubeSat to find something cool out? Yes? If certain flowers will grow in space. If certain flowers will grow in space. That's a great idea. Could, that would be like the most romantic gift ever, right? I grew this flower in space for you. <laughs> That is, that is a nerd gift, y'all. OK. Um, any other ideas for awesome stuff you could send to space in a CubeSat besides Timothy O'Leary's ashes? Timothy O'Leary's ashes. How to make more oxygen. How to make more oxygen. What, like which plants make more oxygen than others? That's a really good one. I bet they've got stuff like that going. Anybody else have any thoughts or ideas? Can you send things you don't like into space? Can you send things you don't like into space? <laughs> Wow, okay, in this non-political class, we are not launching candidates for the President of the United States into space yet. <laughs> Anybody else? I noticed that the um, uh, solar cell is here on their website. What? Are going to try and use that to <gasps> maybe uh, like maneuver it in space? Aids in testing of technology for solar sails. Okay, so I feel like Bill Nye, the science guy, and NASA getting together is basically like the Superman-Batman crossover, right? Okay, that's just, I mean, I could just sit here and stare at this and go, that's so cool. I just want to take it apart and put it back together again and then send it to space because I can do that now. How cool, we are living in the future, people. This is awesome. Um, anything else before we move on to the part of this class where I start individually poking at each one of you to join communities and do stuff? Last questions? Wonderful, bravo, excellent. Okie dokie.